Let's have a look at another example now of network flow where we want to uh, calculate the, the flow capacity um, of this network. So recall that the source is normally or usually labeled with the a letter S, a, a uppercase S, and the sink um, is labeled with an uppercase T. So starting from S, now the 100 could represent anything, um, and especially if there's no context given, it might help to think of it in terms of um, maybe say um, water flow. For example, this could be 100 litres per, per minute um, is the capacity of, of this edge, um, SA. The capacity of edge AB is 10 uh, litres per minute, um, BC is 20 litres per minute, AD is 30 litres per minute, uh, DC is 40, and CT is 100 litres per minute. That doesn't mean that that's actually what's flowing in the pipe. Um, if you recall from the video where we looked at traffic, three lanes going into one, and then one lane uh, so if you remember, recall this this uh, situation, and then the three lands branching back out again, the total flow capacity is one because of this restriction. Okay, So we need to keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is going to calculate now the flow capacity of this entire network. Okay, Now, these are interesting numbers here, 10, 20, 30, 40. If you add those up, uh, you get 100. But let's calculate the flow capacity because you may find that it could actually be less than 100. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the, the two ways that we can get from S to T. So let's, from uh, S to T. And we can go via S, A, B, C, T. Okay, and the other one is S, A, D, C, T. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the capacity of each of these paths. Okay? And then we're going to add those together and that'll give us the total flow capacity. So from along this path, what we're going to look for is the, is the smallest number because that's the restriction. So the smallest number or the, or the most restrictive edge um, is edge AB in fact. So in fact, once you put 10 liters um, through um, S into A and then diverting that to B, you've saturated um, or you basically used up um, this entire edge. Okay, so that's going to be 10. Now, what we do then is that along this path, we're, we're now we're now flowing 10 liters along along this path here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 10 from all of these capacities because we've now used up 10 liters, for example, out of the 100 from CT. We've also from SA we've also used up um, 10 liters. AB is now fully saturated. Okay, we don't have any more capacity left in AB. Okay, so capacity um, usually in this context means how much left or how much of the pipe is there left that can carry um, more water uh, or whatever it is. Uh, BC um, had a capacity of 20. We're now flowing 10 litres um, into that. We now now have a capacity of 10. Okay, so this path now, we cannot flow any more um, in this path. Let's now have a look at the other alternative path to go from S to T, which is S A D C T. And again, let's look for the smallest or the most restrictive edge, um, which is edge A D. Okay, so now we need to use the numbers now that are in red uh, as well. So out of the 90, 30, 40, and 90, the, the 30 is the most is the smallest number. So we're going to subtract 30 again from all these numbers. All these, um, all these weights. So that's zero, and we're going to subtract 30. So now that becomes 60. Uh, 40 minus 30, that becomes 10. Okay, and 90 minus 30 is 60. Okay, so the flow capacity therefore would be 30 along along this particular path. Okay, so when I say I talk about flow capacity in this context, I'm just talking along just the the, the, the capacity of this path. Okay, so I'll just, clear, I'll just uh, clarify what I just meant by that. Now the flow capacity of this entire network is the, is the sum of these two numbers. So 10 plus 30 is 40. So therefore the, the total um, flow capacity uh, is 40 or 40 litres per minute. 